Hi, in this video, we will explain why some nuclei are stable while other nuclei decay or even split. The concept of nuclear stability is essential for understanding radioactivity and nuclear fission. Please, give us a few minutes of your attention. We have to start with an atomic nucleus and the forces that hold it together. In comparison to an atom, an atomic nucleus is much smaller and contains most of the mass of the atom. The atomic nucleus also contains all of its positive electric charge, while its negative charge is distributed in the electron cloud. You can see it in this illustration. The atomic nucleus is represented by the tiny point in the middle of the electron cloud. Most of the nuclear transformations are not affected by the existence of its electron cloud. Electron capture is an exception. The atomic nucleus is so small compared to the atom itself that it must be magnified many times in all illustrations. The following statement is a key takeaway to the whole issue of nuclear stability. Atomic nuclei consist of protons and neutrons, which attract each other through the nuclear force, while protons repel each other via the electric force due to their positive charge. These two forces compete, leading to various degrees of stability of nuclei. The word compete is crucial. There are only certain combinations of neutrons and protons, which form stable nuclei, such as this case of carbon-12, which is one of the most common nuclei in the universe. It contains six protons and six neutrons. In order to understand which combinations are stable and which are not, we need to know the nature of those forces. The residual strong force, also known as the nuclear force, is a very short-range force, which acts to hold neutrons and protons together in nuclei. The residual strong force acts indirectly through the virtual mesons, which transmit the force between nucleons. As for the fundamental strong force, the residual force does diminish rapidly with distance and is thus very short range. Therefore, the residual strong force cannot reach outside the nucleus. In nuclei, this force acts against the enormous repulsive electromagnetic force of the protons. The term residual is associated with the fact that it is the residuum of the strong fundamental interaction between the quarks that make up the protons and neutrons. The electromagnetic force is responsible for all electromagnetic processes. It acts between electrically charged particles. Coulomb's law can be used to calculate the force between charged particles. In this case, between two protons. The electrostatic force is directly proportional to the electrical charges of the two particles and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the particles. The electromagnetic force is weaker than the nuclear force. However, it has a much longer range. Therefore, the more protons in the nucleus, the greater the repulsive force. As the number of protons increases, an increasing ratio of neutrons to protons is needed to form a stable nucleus. Proton-rich unstable nuclei try to get rid of the excess proton to stabilize themselves. Typically via electron capture, beta plus decay, or even proton emission. The electromagnetic repulsion inside heavy nuclei is so strong that these nuclei may also be split into smaller parts. This is a chart of nuclides, in which one axis represents the number of neutrons, and the other represents the number of protons in the atomic nucleus. White nuclides form a line of stability. It can be observed from the chart that there are more neutrons than protons in stable nuclides with Z greater than about 20. These extra neutrons are necessary for the stability of the heavier nuclei. The excess neutrons act somewhat like nuclear glue. Neutrons stabilize the nucleus because they attract each other and protons, which helps offset the electrical repulsion between protons. But even a large number of neutrons does not guarantee stability. Neutron-rich unstable nuclei try to get rid of the neutron to stabilize themselves, typically via beta minus decay or even neutron emission. The instability of neutron-rich nuclei is given by the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two fermions can occupy the same quantum state in a nucleus. 
If there are significantly more neutrons than protons in a nucleus, some of the neutrons will be higher in energy levels in the nucleus. The filling of all the low energy states is envisioned in the liquid drop model, and that favors the condition A equals 2Z. That means equal numbers of protons and neutrons. The Pauli principle also favors even numbers of neutrons and protons. Pairs of fermions will be expected to have anti-parallel spin and therefore not contribute to the overall spin. We must add the nucleus, like the atom, has discrete energy levels whose location and properties are governed by the rules of quantum mechanics. Nuclei with equal proton numbers and equal mass number but different energy states are known as isomers. The locations of the excited states differ for each nucleus. The excitation energy depends on the internal structure of each nucleus. For this reason, there are resonance peaks throughout nuclear cross-sections. Here are key notes from the nuclei chart. There are less than 300 isotopes stable enough to exist naturally on Earth. About 3,000 have been observed in various nuclear experiments. There are no stable nuclides having an equal number of protons and neutrons in their nuclei with atomic number greater than 20. There are no stable nuclides having atomic number greater than 82. Although bismuth with 83 is stable for all practical human purposes. Half-lives of unstable nuclei range from millionths of a second for highly radioactive nuclei to billions of years for long-lived materials. Helium-4, oxygen-16, and calcium-40 are so-called double magic and are found to be particularly stable. What does it mean? A magic number is a number of nucleons in a nucleus corresponding to complete shells within the atomic nucleus. These nuclei have exceptional stability. One indication of this stability is the enhanced abundance of isotopes which have a magic number of neutrons or protons. Atomic nuclei consisting of such a magic number of nucleons have a higher average binding energy per nucleon than one would expect based upon predictions. They are hence more stable against nuclear decay. Magic numbers are predicted by the nuclear shell model. They are proved by observations showing that there are sudden discontinuities in the proton and neutron separation energies at specific values of atomic and neutron numbers. These correspond to the closing of shells. Nuclei with closed shells are more tightly bound than the next higher number. The closing of shells occurs at atomic or neutron number equals 2, 8, 20, 28, 40, 50, 82, 126. It is found that nuclei with even numbers of protons and neutrons are more stable than those with odd numbers. Nuclei that have both neutron numbers and proton numbers equal to one of the magic numbers can be called doubly magic and are found to be particularly stable. To conclude, nuclear stability is a concept that helps to identify the stability of an isotope. It is given by the neutron to proton ratio. Some nuclei are stable and some are unstable. Competition between the attractive nuclear force and repulsive electromagnetic force determines the overall stability of the nucleus, such as in the case of carbon-14. This issue has many engineering consequences. Decay mode and energy are given by the state of the nuclide. All nuclear cross-sections are completely different for different nuclei, so that the concept of nuclear stability is very important. From nuclear reactors through geophysics to the use of radio pharmaceuticals and medicine. Moreover, without this behavior of nuclei, there would be no life on Earth. Just as the Sun depends on the beta decay of light nuclei, so the interior of planet Earth depends on the heat from the decay of heavy nuclei. That's all. Thank you for your attention. If you want to know more, visit nuclearpower.com and don't forget to subscribe.